Hi, it's Katie Degner from Mr. Palm's class. Um, so I'm doing my book report for a uh, non-fiction, not fake book. I did read a biography on Kurt Cobain called Cobain Unseen. Kurt Cobain was the lead singer and guitarist of Nirvana, which was a band in the late 80s to the mid 90s. They were really popular when they really took off as mid 90s. And um, the book's called Cobain and Scene, written by Charles R. Cross. Charles R. Cross actually worked at a radio station where Nirvana was played, and he had actually, you know, known about Kurt and met him a few times just because of business reasons. And uh, he's written several books about Kurt. This particular one, Cobain Unseen, came out in 2008. Uh, he wrote one that came out in 2014. I don't remember what one was called. There's one called Heavier Than Heaven that came out, I think, 2003 about Kurt Cobain. So there's several ones on him. He's also written several other books, ones on other musicians like Jimi Hendrix, uh, Led Zeppelin, uh, The Music Business. So there's a lot by this author with music. He's a, very big, especially in uh, punk and rock music, because that's the kind of stuff that the station played. That's the kind of stuff he was working with. Um, uh, analysis of the title, basically, it's called Cobain Unseen because most people saw Kurt Cobain when he was famous, or even now, uh, as a stereotype, as the guy screaming on stage because that's what he did. He did rock and roll. But he was so much more than that. He was an artist. He was a husband, a father, and a really good friend to a lot of people. And a lot of people didn't see him as that, they just thought of him as Kurt Cobain, the lead singer of Nirvana. That's what he was known for, that's what he was seen as t on TV for. So, that's, this is showing who he really was, what was unseen. Uh, so, this book is about his entire life, starting at his childhood. Uh, when he was seven, he was put on Ritalin for ADD, and that was the, probably his first experience with drugs. I mean, it's been in his entire life. Uh, he's been surrounded by it or experimenting with it. Uh, he also had his first uh, experience with suicide when he was younger. When he was in third grade, he was walking through the woods in Aberdeen, Washington, where he lived, and he came across a hanging body on his way to school with some friends, and that was his first experience with suicide, which was tragic, but it happened. And he lived in Aberdeen until he was 17. He moved out. He slept on several people's, people's porches. He floors, even under a bridge. He did whatever he could. And uh, eventually he ended up just uh, forming a band. He was still working on his art. He was really into painting and drawing. He kept billions of journals, and so many journals, and so many doodles, so many pieces of art that he's either destroyed, created, etc. And uh, he put out three albums with this band, uh, the second one that really took off, Nevermind. Uh, and he became famous, and sometimes pain makes people collapse, and that all led up to his suicide. And reading of a small passage, I want to read to you about Kurt. Here's a picture of him, by the way. This is going with the passage. It says, two-year-old Kurt at his Aunt Mari's home, holding a tambourine. He loved music, even from an early age, and was exposed to bands like The Birds uh, by his aunts and uncles. So his influence with music has been his entire life. He's been surrounded by it since day one, because his aunt was a singer and guitar player. He's just been surrounded by it. Uh, literary elements, conflict. Kurt didn't get along with his parents very well. Unfortunately, they were divorced when he was younger, like in his early tweens, and he ended up getting kicked out of his mother's house when he was 17. And that's a really big conflict for a lot of people because most people have an okay relationship with their parents and when you don't, it's it gets really hectic. Another one could be uh, foreshadowing when he had that, uh, running into the man hanging in the woods, uh, his first interaction with suicide. He started telling his friends and talking about how he too was going to commit suicide one day, <laughs> foreshadowing his own death, even in the third grade. Which, you know, people just thought, oh, it was a joke, oh, you know, he's just, you know, he's young, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, and then, yeah. <laughs> um, a really good reason to read this novel is just, a lot of people see him and see bands like this as just something that 
you know, grunge people are into, or only a certain genre. It's only appealing to certain people. It really is more than that if you look into who he is as a person. Because he had so much more life to him than just his music, and I don't think a lot of people understood that with his relationships with his wife and his daughter, Francis, and uh, he painted, he wrote, he, he thought so much about a lot of things that I just thought were really interesting, and I would definitely recommend it to anyone who likes thinking or reading or about that kind of thing where it's just questioning. Uh, and I would give it a 5 out of 5 because I honestly don't have a problem with it. I would give it a lower rating if I did, but I don't. It's a biography. It's a story of someone's life, in this case Kurt Cobain's, and I think it was an accurate portrayal of who he really was as a person rather than over-romanticizing his music career, which is exactly what I was looking for in a book like this. Thank you.